Hey, welcome to YouTube with Sarah. Um, thank you so much for watching. We're continuing our series on prayer and always trying to make technical improvements. So, you know, we'll see how we go with this one. Um, but we're continuing series on prayer as it relates to conversation, communication with God. And I like this series of boatload because I think it's extremely practical framing for you, for me, um, what does prayer look like and what can it look like? Um, not necessarily having some of those traditional kind of rote, uh, stuck in the mud mindsets a little bit, kind of religious, but thinking of it in broad contexts. With that said, today's lesson is basically prayer from Jesus as he trained his disciples. And I know the intro says, you know, not necessarily traditional or religious. However, and I'm going to do this contrast here right now, a little bit, it seems might maybe a little bit like hypocritical for me to say, don't be religious, don't be rote, and then for me to just move right into the Lord's Prayer. However, um, I don't think you, you can we can really talk about prayer and learning how to pray and ignore <laughs> what Jesus' disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray, and then ignore what Jesus said, because I think that would be kind of like um, really foolish uh, in, a, in a significant way. So thinking about the Lord's Prayer, um, thinking about what Jesus taught his disciples and how he taught them to pray. And I would suggest that sometimes thinking of prayer in terms of a little bit of a pattern helps us to kind of think in terms of moving along to various places and parts and parking at them, so to speak, um, in relation to pausing for a moment and thinking in those terms. So for example, let me give you this quick quick little thought, um, paradigm. So I've been to a park and there's a park near my house that has this like pathway on it. And at various points on the pathway, it has these little exercise spots. And there's a little sign and maybe a bench or something that tells you at this place, you do like sit-ups. And then you jog or walk to the next little spot, which is, I don't know, a quarter of a mile or something. And at that spot, maybe you do pull-ups. <laughs> or something loosely like that. Um, and then the next one, you go down another quarter of a mile, or whatever, and the next spot is um, maybe you do push-ups, you know. And so at each of these little spots, you do these different exercises. So I would suggest that this prayer pattern is a little bit like that. Our Father, who art in heaven, this is speaking to our Heavenly Father and seeing, framing the conversation as a daughter or a son with our Father and Heavenly Father, Perfect Father, hallowed be your name. You're holy, you're revered, you're worthy of glory and honor. And taking some moments to pause in these respective areas. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Father, I ask today that your will would be done. Um, I have things I want, but at the end of the day I want your will to trump, so to speak, or exceed, be supreme over my will. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Just like it does, is in heaven, make that parallel down here. Give us today our daily bread. What does that mean? Well, daily bread can be a variety of things. It can be energy, it can be strength, it can be wisdom, it can be solutions, it can be all kinds of provisions. Give us today and today. Maybe not three years down the road, but today, whatever this date is, whenever you're watching this, um, this day, our daily bread, like manna in the desert, uh, with Moses and the Israelites when they were wandering around for 40 years. Today, daily bread. Forgive us our debts, Oof, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us, who owe us. As, there's an interesting parallel here. I forgive and our Heavenly Father forgives. And Jesus says that if we don't forgive on earth, then our Heavenly Father won't forgive us. That's a really significant eye-opening. And thinking back, you know, as you pray through this pattern, thinking about, hmm, are there individuals that I have not forgiven, regardless of if they ask for apology or whether they deserve it or not, not part of the equation. It's simply the, the request requirement that if we want to receive forgiveness from our Heavenly Father, then we must forgive the horizontal relationships in our lives. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who owe us. Lead us not into temptation. Ooh. On this day, help me not to experience temptation. Help me not to walk into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Deliver me from the evil one, the enemy who tries to provoke me, who tries to dissuade me, who tries to deceive me, who tries to trip me up. Jesus says in John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. 
So keep me away from that enemy of my soul and help me to snuggle in Jesus to your love and your truth and who you are. Help me to walk in, in your reality and not in the deception and distortion of the enemy. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Great way to finish your prayer time, prayer pattern, with Jesus walking through and giving celebration and honor to him for who he is as you finish with praise and worship. So, today's joke. I know, you're like, oh, here we go, brace yourself. What is today's joke? Here's the joke. If you need an ark, ark, A-R-K, I know a man. I know, that's so great. Oh my goodness. Love it, love it, love it. Thanks again for watching uh, my YouTube channel. And, of course, you want to subscribe, pass this on to your friends. Super helpful and a really insightful way to learn and grow in our daily prayer life with Jesus. Thanks. Mm -hmm.